In this video, I want to talk to you about custom domains in your app. And what do I mean by that? Let me give you a quick demo. For example, on the Biodrop project, as you can see in the URL, we have biodrop.io forward slash Eddie Jowd. This is my Biodrop profile. And if I go to the next tab along, this is jowdstudios.co.uk, and it's showing my Biodrop profile. Yes, it's in dark mode, just so I can show you the difference, but also there is no header and footer, and that's a design decision we've made, but it's the same profile, the same information, the same links, the same tabs. And when you have a multi-tenancy platform, and what that means is different users using the same platform, but it adapts to their data, you might want them to have a custom domain, just like I've showed you. And there are lots of examples out there on the internet how to do this. And in this project, we're using Next.js and Vercel, which is a popular technology stack to use. And the examples out there show you how to do hello world, kind of in custom domains. And I thought, wow, this is gonna take me like a couple of hours, I'll get to do it. But if I show you the pull request, you can see this has been going on for well over a month because there's actually lots of situations you need to think of when you're doing custom domains in your app. And that's what I wanna kind of go through with you today as a light touch. And I can show you what I did and why. So yes, it is easy to achieve this, but in reality, there's actually a lot more boundary conditions that you need to think of. So let's go to files change and let's have a look. I'll take you through the most interesting ones. And if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know below. And I can actually maybe create in another video, a project where we could build it from scratch. And let me know if that's something you'll be interested in. So I've updated the environment variables. We need access to the project ID on Vercel, the team ID, and an auth token so we can add the domain to Vercel. And what that looks like is, is it will appear in the project domain section. And people will add that through their Biodot profile. Again, I will show you that shortly, but you can see these custom domains appear here. And if I go to my account and the premium section of managing my account, you can see this is the domain I added. It says DNS configured correctly. And you can see it matches what is here shown on Vercel. And that was actually quite challenging to do. So I want to show you how we achieved that. Let's move on. This GitHub action you can ignore. I've made some button changes, ignore all that. Again, I'm just going to focus on the actual custom domain part. This is how um, we get to that documentation, et cetera, and so forth. Middleware. So I don't know if you've used the middleware on Next.js. It is pretty awesome, but also it does have certain limitations depending on how you want to do it. So one thing we had to add was we wanted to match on the root. And we didn't want a wildcard after that at the end. We just wanted to match on the root because people using a custom domain are not going to append docs or login or anything like that. So that is what we added. Our logger was not available in the middleware, so we're just using console log for the moment. That's something we want to hopefully improve in the near future. We actually get the host name being used from the request headers. We remove the HTTP and HTTPS from our base URL in our environment variable where it's deployed to. So in this case, biodrop.io. Therefore, we can check against the request header that we've done above. And the reason why we want to do that is, is we can kind of skip this check because for every request coming into our app, we don't want to check if the domain matches something in the database because that will make every request, every page slow. So we wanted to kind of skip this section or fail fast is the other expression that's used. So we want to check if it's a custom domain. So what we do is the hosted domain is the base URL where we're hosting on biodrop.io. And then if the request domain doesn't match and the request path is a forward slash as in there's no extra paths at the end then let's go check if there's a custom domain that matches in the database so we'll say custom domain used we'll log that and then we have to make an api request we can't get access to our database at the moment in the middleware so make an api request which is a little bit slower because we're going over http and we could change this for Redis or something like that if we want even more speed uh, performance improvements, but we didn't want to add extra technologies to the data stack just yet because it would make it more difficult for people to contribute to the project and get it set up locally. So we do make a request and then with the request we see, is a user found? Are they a premium user? Is a domain found? And does the domain being requested match their profile. 
If it does, we rewrite to the profile's username that's matched and we display the domain that is being used. That's why when we go to jowlstudios.co.uk, it stays as jowlstudios.co.uk, but it is displaying my profile. Because if I went to biodrop.io, it's gonna show the homepage. Whereas on the root of the custom domain, it shows the person's profile. And if it, the domain isn't matched, we'll log it. Therefore, we know someone's kind of pointing the domain at our app, but it's not matched. They haven't added it to their profile yet, which is what I showed you over here when it's added to their profile. So there are two steps. One is to update their domain, and we've got documentation for that. So therefore, it points to Biodrop, and then they need to add it to their Biodrop profile in the Manage section, so therefore, we can match the two together. So we had to make some model updates so they could actually save that, and then you've got the whole CRUD part of updating this in their profile. So when they actually save it in their profile, we have to write this domain, not only to the database using our kind of, you know, CRUD application, but also to Vercel. And what we've done is we've got a Vercel domain status, so we can check the status of that domain, and therefore we could return it to the user. So each time they hit save or visit this page, we can see, is it configured correctly or is it not? Is it a red, is it an error? And also we need to add it. So here we say, if there's a domain that is different to the domain being set, then we actually need to remove it from Vercel. Otherwise, we'll just keep getting domains added over and over again. So if the domain being added is not the same as the domain we've got before, then let's remove it. So we'd make an API request to Vercel and ask them to remove it with the method delete. So this is the API endpoint. And we should probably move this code to reusable utilities that we can reuse in other places and other people can use in other projects as well. That's something we can add later on. And then once it's been removed, then the next section is we want to add the custom domain, but we need to do two additions. What we need to do is add it to the domain section under the team, but then we also need to make another add with again with a post with the same domain, it's the same body, the same tokens we've got in our environment variables, but it's to a slightly different domain because we need to add it to the project. This is where we we'll use the environment variable project ID. And if that's all successful, then great, we return it to the user and all is happy. The one thing we have to think is this is not very transactional. So if something fails, we do update our database. I don't know if you noticed, we do have some error handling. So we do have a try around this. So if there's something breaks really badly, then we'll do a catch and return the error. But the other thing is what happens if it's rejected? So it doesn't break communicating with Vercel, but Vercel rejects it. So if an error comes back to Vercel, we will actually update the domain in the database. Therefore, the user can re-add it again and try against Vercel. But one thing I have noticed, our catch does not remove it from the database. And that's something we want to do because otherwise it will appear to the user that it's been added. This will be an error saying DNS incorrect because it can't find it on Vercel. And then they'll think they need to update their domain. But actually, we should omit this and remove it from the database. So therefore, they can add it again and try again. So against Vercel. So let me go do that straight off this video. So when you look at this, that will code will be slightly updated. What we will do in the code, I've got this bit update domain and it will update it to the previous version of the domain in the database. But again, doing transactional with an external API is quite difficult to handle, especially here when we're making two calls, we would have to roll back if anything goes wrong. And in theory, we should, add it back to Vercel on the first step if the second step fails, but hopefully it all works out okay if the first step passes. And if the first step fails, it doesn't continue on to the second step. So that is how we managed to do it. And if I, I haven't saved this, so I refresh the page because I don't want to break my profile, but I could do, and so I show you. Let me change this to something else. I don't know, say Jald, .co.uk, which is a domain I don't own, and it's a domain that I'm not going to configure. I'm going to hit save, give it a moment to talk to the APIs on Vercel, and now it's going to say DNS misconfigured. So if I go back to here, you can see jowlstudios.co.uk is being removed. It's not below um, Eddie and Sarah Explore, and now it's added jowl.co.uk, but it says invalid. If I refresh this page, it now breaks 
and it doesn't work. So to fix that, either remove it completely and do nothing, or I could do jailstudios.co.uk. And if I hit save, we go back to Vercel, that with not out touching any hands, jail.co.uk will get removed and jailstudios.co.uk should appear. And um, we should then see it all working again, back to normal. Let's have a look. So jailstudios.co.uk, DNS configured correctly. And if we come back to here, you can see jail.co.uk has been removed without me touching anything, so my hands are up. And jailstudios.co.uk has now appeared and it says DNS correct. If I refresh jazzstudios.co.uk, my profile reappears. So it's all working really, really well. I think there are some boundary conditions we need to tweak. We have done a soft launch today, so go try it out if you have, and we'll be doing a shout and a proper launch very, very soon. But if you want to geek out with me on the open source project BioDrop, it would be great to geek out with you every day. I am working full time on this open source project. Let's come and learn together. Link in the description below to the GitHub repo, I'd love a star, and also our Discord community where we can collaborate every day together. I'll see you there.